I think you can hear me. Are we are we live? Yeah. yeah. Wait till this little bar shifts to twelve one hundred percent, and then it'll say it. and then it'll say on air, like it does now up there in the top right corner. Oh, we're on air. Hey, we're on air. Actually, we're on copper and fiber and concrete and a rubber mat. So welcome to Philabot Live. If you are a regular viewer, you know that our 3 p.m. Eastern start time is uh, comes with, with a bit of flexibility because we're on YouTuber time. <laughs> <laughs> island, island YouTube time. Yeah. YouTube island time, which could be anywhere from three to nine. Exactly. So we've got plenty of time. Yeah. So here we go. We've got another episode. We're going to talk about some fun stuff today. And you may notice that I'm on camera with someone who's a lot taller than Tyler. And it's, and, it's, and it's not auto. I think you're taller than me, so I don't I don't think it's really a joke at your expense. But we've got Kevin from out behind the camera to talk about what? What are we gonna talk about today, Kevin? We're gonna talk about the burning question that everyone in the world has and beyond. Can you mix PLA <laughs> with ABS? <laughs> Every everything I was trying to throw in was inappropriate. I was like, nope, nope, like I'm just throwing out ideas. Every one of them failed, failed the test. Can you mix? So we know copolymers are a thing. Yeah. Why would you want to mix? Let's let's start there. Why why is is having copolymers, if we're gonna call it that, is, is that like a, a real term? Copolymers is a term. Okay. So why is this is actually a relevant? copolymer? Not the not what's on here. This. The spool. The, the spool. The spool is actually a copolymer. Okay. Um, what's it, it made of? Is polycarbonate and ABS, right? We did the spool study. Tyler? I think we found out it's polystyrene. And ABS. I don't remember. Okay. But no, some anyway, schools have been... The polished. keyboard, actually. Yes, the, the last keyboard, keyboard video, we actually showed a close-up of the two markings on it that tell mm -hmm. what plastic it is. Yeah. And it was a polycarbonate ABS blend. Yep. Um, so that's a copolymer. And Why would you do that? You do that to... Um, so chemically, the polymers don't like interact with each other. They just mix together. It's kind of like mixing uh, a resin with a... Uh, like a fiber weave, like fiberglass. Like so you're sound. mixing two different things. You're not blending it. You're not like applying it under pressure. Yeah. You're just putting everything in the bowl and mixing it up. Yeah. Because it's, it's a, better yeah. than eating things separately. Same exact. Maybe the worst analogy <laughs> I've ever come up with. But like it's... salad dressing and salad and yeah. Same, oh, same exact better. thing. Okay, I got so you. So you're mixing two things together and you do that because salad dressing tastes good <laughs> <laughs> and lettuce doesn't taste that good. But the lettuce is good for you. Right, but the right? two together. So you want these two properties. Okay, I see where you're going. Together. Yeah. yeah. In harmony. So that's why you make copolymers. You're trying to get two properties together. Harnessing the best of both. Yes. So, okay. yeah. And PLA is great for printing. But it's kind of brittle and mm -hmm. fragile. Some grades anyway. Some grades are better. But most grades out there are somewhat brittle. Okay. Um, ABS is strong, and it's tough, but it's also terrible to print with. Why? Um, it splits. It actually, we have an example of ABS here. So ABS, um, it shrinks a lot, and that causes stress After in the cools, part. You mean? Oh boy. Which can warp it. Where we're showing the cracks in the front. Yeah. So if you look at this part, you can see some stress cracking. If I can focus it. You may Remember have to look close. at the screen. Look at Here, I'll hold it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, so if you look at the stress crack there on the oh, temple. Right here. On the temple kind of, yeah, there you can see it really good actually for a second there. But um, what's happening there is the ABS is cooling and causing a lot of tension inside the part as it's printing and that causes delamination. Mm -hmm. And it happened right there because that's a really small corner so there's not a lot of um, surface that's that's bonding together, and so the stress of it warping actually caused the the corner to crack there. So that's just another, and you can solve that by doing a heated environment, but a lot of printers don't have that. Right. Right. Okay. So that's a property you don't like about ABS. So in theory, <laughs> left hand. If you mix PLA with ABS. 
it should warp less because you've got a certain amount of PLA that warps less and, and be less mixed brittle. In. Yeah, and be less brittle. Okay. So yeah, you want to combine properties. So I'm with you conceptually. So obviously, this is a thing that we can try because we make this. we make things yep. that make these things. So we can put the things in that thing. And, and to be clear, this is not a. There are extruders that are designed specifically for compounding copolymers. This is a regular single screw extruder, but it works well enough, and especially in the application of 3D printing where you are sending it through another tiny nozzle and printing hundreds of little layers and movements, what you end up with is actually a pretty well compounded polymer in your 3D printed part. Because if you think of like a tube of toothpaste, it's got the, the little strands of uh, different colors. Yeah. Red. The, the same red, thing the happens the in a single screw extruder. That makes sense. So you've got your different polymers, they melt and they combine, but they're still kind of somewhat, somewhat separate. But when you print with it, you make those little irregularities smaller, and then you kind of mix them up in the nozzle. So when you print something that's not done on a compounding extruder, it actually ends up somewhat compounded. Okay. So it's an interesting thing. we found out about our systems. So this was something that we've been talking about for a while, the idea of combining PLA and ABS to create copolymers. Oh, do you, don't, you don't want to name it? Oh, right. Yeah, we had a fun name. Plabs. <laughs> we've, uh, PLA, ABS. we've talked about doing this video for months, like literally months, just so we could say plabs on the air. Mm -hmm. Because it's fun to say. And I forgot the name. But it is fun to say. We're still working on how to write it. Should it we've have two a, A's? We've got a couple different ways. Should they both be capital? So it's like plabs. <laughs> like a goat. What if you have more plab or more PLA? No, I think the moment you add anything <laughs> from both, it becomes plabs. Nice. But we'll, anyway, we'll work on how to write it. We'll work on the name later. For right now, we... Well, what we did is, is we combined 50-50. Yes. And it worked. It worked great. And we were a little bit surprised how well it worked. So we did right use we did use we a grade of ABS it. and a grade of PLA that has similar melt temperatures, which is important. Because if you're overheating one of the polymers, it's still gonna degrade. It doesn't matter if it's mixed with another polymer. You wanna use things that have similar temperature properties. Otherwise you're just gonna mix it'd be like mixing wax with something else that melts. Iron. Way less. Yeah. It'd be like trying to mix wax and iron together. Get some and wax melt the them iron. together. The <laughs> when iron. you heat it up in the iron melt, the wax burns off. Right. And if it's melting the wax, it's not gonna melt the iron. Right. So yeah, similar similar idea. A lot of uh, you know similarities to just normal stuff can be applied to polymers. It's not kind of crazy complicated. No, we're not unless done. you're dealing with chemistry, but we're not. <laughs> Right. We're, we're not done working this, this PLA, ABS, this PLABS uh, experiment. Yeah, this you know, is kind of our, an introduction. What's our next step? You know, so we, so we, we, we did 50-50, we've it. got some stuff. You know, maybe we can talk about it and the, the pros and the cons. And, and so we have going next. two examples, actually. Oh, just one at a time, right? <laughs> so the first one is 50-50 uh, virgin pellets, right. ABS and PLA. So 50-50 mixture of virgin PLA and virgin ABS and there was no stress cracking. The melt flow of the polymer is slightly different, the copolymer. So if you can see on the, yeah, that side, see how the, I don't know anatomy, so I don't know what part of the skull that's called, but the part that connects your like cheekbone to the back of the skull there didn't print because it's a really small, mandible? tiny. Is that the mandible? Is it? I don't know. Maybe. We'll call it the mandible. So that didn't print. Print on the other side. But uh, that kind of has to do with just the physical nature of the polymer when it's melted, the copolymer. So this we was, ended up... Yeah, this was the just the 50-50. Yeah. So we successfully um, improved the shrinkage property there. Which was a goal. Yes. So that we uh, checked that box. How about the, the brittle? We brittle haven't box. tested that yet. So we haven't actually tried to smash it compared to like a normal <laughs> PLA bar. We'll have hammer? to print a different shape. Not a skull? No. But then we tried uh, ABS and PLA from 100% recycled material. So 
so that's both 100 percent It's so recycled. creepy looking it really is <laughs> we didn't that. take the support material out on yeah. purpose because uh as you can see on the side it didn't work quite so well it was a bad bonding issue there's no raft um Why but also always... another another thing you can see on the support material is the fact that the melt flow from the poly from the copolymer is higher and that i think that has to do something with like the temperature difference because they're even though the temperature melting point is similar it's still slightly different so we were finding that too high and the PLA would actually be too liquidy okay. and too low the ABS wouldn't melt completely so there is a range you have to be in there and we didn't completely optimize the settings because we were limited on time but we got close enough so what's our next step support. you know we, we've, we've done this we've done some 50 50 we've it's worked well enough that we can Print with it, you know, which obviously is the first goal. Can we get some printing? Well, a little high on that one. <laughs> can we? Can we do it? We did it. It works with with limited um, conditions. Yeah. Right. We can say it works, maybe not perfectly, but it works. So, what's our next step in refining that process? Whether it's 50/50 or maybe we're starting to shift one way or the other. You know, because I'm sure there are people out there saying, oh, okay, you know, I have an extruder, I have plenty of PLA, I have ABS, I hadn't considered making plabs or plabs, however you choose to say it, and I want to start experimenting on my own. So where might we direct them? Where are we going to take it? Well, we obviously have some more properties we want to check. Um, we want to try um, different mixtures. Mm. And we also want to, in the future, try different polymers, but for right now we're going to focus on PLA and ABS. So future updates, we're going to do it with the EX2 because we didn't have time yet. Um, but we basically want to develop this out in a way that it can be replicated and um, just kind of test the whole idea of making copolymers on our systems. So. Yeah. Adds a whole level of versatility to our systems. and gives people the ability to really fine tune based on what you're making. I mean, it, yeah. you know, it's, it's one thing if you're printing a skull for your desk, maybe it doesn't matter, but if you're printing mission critical parts, you're trying to print replacement parts, parts for know, customer orders, maybe you're someplace that has an extruder and you're, you're making things for other people. I don't really know why that's funny. I'm gonna throw skulls at you. Printing things for Space Force. Print, don't talk about politics. <laughs> It just we can laugh about that later, but we're not we're not going there. Please, we uh, Please don't go there. You you may want to fine tune. You may find that you know you're doing a run of production and you know 50 50 doesn't work, but you've got a, a really solid feeling that 55 45 would really be the perfect ratio. And you can do that without paying a, some filament house to custom blend material, and then all of a sudden. You know, if, if that really gives you the benefits that you're looking for, you know, an EX2 and EX6 versus buying kilos and kilos of custom filament, it's not as big of a price swing. It's not nearly as, as yeah. um, it's a lot more lucrative. And the other thing was. about um, recycling, uh, typically you have a lot of different grades of the same type. So we have a lot of bins of PLA, but they're different grades of PLA. And that can affect affect like the uh, extrudability of it, makes it more difficult. Yeah. But ABS, one of the nice properties is it's really great for extrusion, and that was one of the improvements we saw when mixing PLA with ABS is the fact that it actually improved the extrudability of the recycled, especially when we mixed the uh, the completely recycled polymers together. It improves the extrudability, so it's got lots of great applications. Yeah. And it's not terribly expensive. Did you guys talk about acetone, the bath? Oh, that's another thing we want to try. You can show that. So anyone who's uh, I'll walk this over. got some experience it? with the, the 3D printing world uh, has probably heard of uh, vapor bath smoothing, which works with ABS. It's where you put uh, acetone and your 3D print in a chamber. You heat it up, and the vapor from the acetone kind of uh, my hand model. Melts right the outside of the part and makes it nice and smooth. That's a property we want to see if we can apply to, or we want to see if these PLA ABS 
parts have that property. We haven't had a chance to try it yet, but we will be soon. Um, which would be another great, great property to add to mm. anything that you're 3D printing. So if you can add the fact that you can vapor smooth it on top of the fact that it doesn't warp while you're printing it, These it's are pretty attractive. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So. All right. Basically, it. Did we go over anything? Go over anything else? Yeah, it's probably a good place to leave it. You know, from, from what we've discussed, this isn't going to be our focus necessarily over the next few weeks. As we have updates for We just for tried everyone. it, so we want to yeah. introduce it. You know, this isn't, if you've been following for a while, we've been doing these recycling studies every week. This, we're not shifting gears. This is just something we wanted to talk about today because we were excited to talk about it. So as we have more developments for you, as we work out kind of the next step, as we have more results, we'll come back to you with that and we'd kind of love to hear like if you've got some experiment making your own labs labs however you want to say it or write it you know we, we do want to hear from you and get us on social media or email or that's probably it that's it i mean you could call us but we don't we'd love to but we can't sit on the phone and talk about labs with you all day <laughs> we customer can, support calls yeah we, we try to limit those uh Good. Yeah, so yeah. let us know about that. Any Anything we got to talk um, about? Just 3D Print Channel saying hey and flaps for the win. Hey, what's up 3D Print Channel? Thanks for thanks for watching. You know, we do make these every Thursday? Yeah, every, every Thursday, Thursday, 3 p.m. About three. Eastern. So <laughs> feel free to join us and you can jump in the chat. Say hey. We still have the 3D printing page. Facebook page. Oh yeah, the Facebook the, page. Will yeah, it extrude? Will it extrude Facebook page. Go on there and put uh, suggestions on things we should try. Things yeah. you're interested in. Um, questions you might have about recycling stuff and extruding different polymers. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching our videos. Really appreciate it. We appreciate the uh, community input, so please uh, ask us questions and comment. This is where we should let it run, right? <laughs> this is our this is our banter. Yep. Or shut the mic or talk over time. No, no, keep the mic on. You never. That would know be really annoying. I just, hate watching people talking. But like when they pull out from the newsroom them. and they're just like shuffle, shuffle, <laughs> shuffle, <laughs> whisper. <laughs> and then and then Trevor Noah's like, and he covers his mouth, and I'm like, <laughs> I know you're saying it's inappropriate <laughs> stuff, Trevor. But John Stewart, back when he did it, you know, John Stewart was saying horrible things that mm. you didn't want to listen mm. to. Offensive, you know, we have like. 